The Book of Shemot, Exodus, Chapter 1. Now these are the names of the children of Yashorel, which came into Mitzrayim. Every man and his household came with Jacob, Reuben, Shimon, Levi, Yehuda, Yisachar, Zebulun, and Benjamin, Dan, Naphtali, Gad, and Asher. And all the souls that came out of the loins of Jacob were seventy souls, for Yosef was in Mitzrayim already. And Yosef died, and all his brethren, and all that generation. And the children of Yashorel were fruitful, and increased abundantly, and multiplied, and waxed exceeding mighty, and the land was filled with them. Now there arose up a new king over Mitzrayim, which knew not Yosef. And he said unto his people, Behold, the people of the children of Yasharel are more and mightier than we. Come on, let us deal wisely with them, lest they multiply, and it come to pass, that when there falls out any war, they join also unto our enemies, and fight against us. And so, get them up out of the land. Therefore they did set over them taskmasters to afflict them with their burdens. And they built for Pharaoh treasure cities, Python, and Ramesses. But the more they afflicted them, the more they multiplied and grew. And they were grieved because of the children of Yashrael. And the Mitzrayim made the children of Yashrael to serve with rigor. And they made their lives bitter with hard bondage, in mortar, and in brick, and in all manner of service in the field. All their service, wherein they made them to serve, was with rigor. And the king of Mitzrayim spoke to the Ivri midwives, of which the name of the one was Shifra, and the name of the other Pua. And he said, When ye do the office of a midwife to the Ivrith woman, and see them upon the stools, if it be a son, then ye shall kill him. But if it be a daughter, then she shall live. But the midwives feared Elohim, and did not as the king of Mitzrayim commanded them, but saved the men children alive. And the king of Mitzrayim called for the midwives, and said unto them, Why have you done this thing, and have saved the men children alive? And the midwives said unto Pharaoh, Because the Ivrith women are not as the Mitzrith women, for they are lively, and are delivered ere the midwives come in unto them. Therefore Elohim dealt well with the midwives, and the people multiplied, and waxed very mighty. And it came to pass, because the midwives feared Elohim, that he made them houses. And Pharaoh charged all his people, saying, Every son that is born ye shall cast into the river, and every daughter ye shall save alive. Shemot, Exodus, chapter 2. And there went a man of the house of Levi, and took to be his woman a daughter of Levi. And the woman conceived, and bore a son. And when she saw him that he was a goodly child, she hid him three months. And when she could no longer hide him, she took for him an ark of bulrushes, and daubed it with slime and with pitch, and put the child therein, and she laid it in the reeds by the river's brink. And his sister stood afar off, to wit what would be done to him. And the daughter of Pharaoh came down to wash herself at the river, and her maidens walked along by the river's side. And when she saw the ark among the reeds, she sent her maid to fetch it. And when she had opened it, she saw the child, and behold, the babe wept. And she had compassion on him, and said, This is one of the Ephraim children. Then said his sister to Pharaoh's daughter, Shall I go and call to you a nurse of the Ivrith woman, that she may nurse the child for you? And Pharaoh's daughter said to her, Go. And the maid went, and called the child's mother. And Pharaoh's daughter said unto her, Take this child away, and nurse it for me, and I will give you your wages. And the woman took the child, and nursed it. And the child grew, and she brought him unto Pharaoh's daughter, and became her son. And she called his name Moshe. And she said, because I drew him out of the water. And it came to pass in those days, when Moshe was grown, that he went out unto his brethren, and looked on their burdens. And he spied a Mitzri smiting an Ivri, one of his brethren. And he looked this way, and that way. And when he saw that there was no man, he slew the Mitzri, and hid him in the sand. And when he went out the second day, behold, 
two men of the Ivrim strove together. And he said to him that did the wrong, Wherefore do you smite your fellow? And he said, Who made you a prince and a judge over us? Intend you to kill me as you killed the Mitzri? And Moshe feared and said, Surely this thing is known. Now when Pharaoh heard this thing, he sought to slay Moshe. But Moshe fled from the face of Pharaoh and dwelt in the land of Midian. And he sat down by a well. Now the priest of Midian had seven daughters, and they came and drew water and filled the troughs to water their father's flock. And the shepherds came and drove them away. But Moshe stood up and helped them and watered their flock. And when they came to Reul, their father, he said, How is it that ye are come so soon today? And they said, A Mitzri delivered us out of the hand of the shepherds and also drew water enough for us and watered the flock. And he said unto his daughters, And where is he? Why is it that ye have left the man? Call him that he may eat bread. And Moshe was content to dwell with the man. And he gave Moshe Zipporah his daughter, and she bore to him a son. And he called his name Gershom, for he said, I have been a stranger in a strange land. And it came to pass in the process of time that the king of Mitzrayim died. And the children of Yashrael sighed by reason of the bondage, and they cried. And their cry came up unto Elohim by reason of the bondage. And Elohim heard their groaning, and Elohim remembered his covenant with Abraham, with Yitzchak, and with Yaakob. And Elohim looked upon the children of Yashrael, and Elohim had respect unto them. Shemot, Exodus, chapter 3. Now Moshe kept the flock of Yitro, his father-in-law, the priest of Midian. And he led the flock to the backside of the desert and came to the mountain of Elohim, even to Horeb. And the angel of Yahuwah appeared unto him in a flame of fire out of the midst of a thorn bush. And he looked, and behold, the thorn bush burned with fire, and the thorn bush was not consumed. And Moshe said, I will now turn aside and see this great sight, why the thorn bush is not burnt. And when Yahuwah saw that he turned aside to see, Elohim called unto him out of the midst of the thorn bush and said, Moshe, Moshe. And he said, Here am I? And he said, Draw not nigh hither. Put off your shoes from off your feet, for the place whereon you stand is holy ground. Moreover, he said, I am the Elohai of your father, the Elohai of Avraham, the Elohai of Yitzhak, and the Elohai of Yaakov. And Moshe hid his face, for he was afraid to look upon Elohim. And Yahuwah said, I have surely seen the affliction of my people, which are in Mitzrayim, and have heard their cry by reason of their taskmasters, for I know their sorrows. And I am come down to deliver them out of the hand of the Mitzrayim, and to bring them up out of that land unto a good land and a large unto a land flowing with milk and honey, unto the place of the Canaanim, and the Hittim, and the Imarim, and the Perizim, and the Hivim, and the Yevusim. Now therefore, behold the cry of the children of Yasharel is come unto me, and I have also seen the oppression wherewith the Mitzrayim oppressed them. Come now therefore, I will send you unto Pharaoh, that you may bring forth my people, the children of Yasharel, out of Mitzrayim. And Moshe said unto Elohim, Who am I that I should go unto Pharaoh, and that I should bring forth the children of Yasharel out of Mitzrayim? And he said, Certainly I will be with you, and this shall be a sign unto you that I have sent you. When you have brought forth the people out of Mitzrayim, Ye shall serve Elohim upon this mountain. And Moshe said unto Elohim, Behold, when I come unto the children of Yashrael, and say unto them, The Elohai of your fathers has sent me unto you, and they shall say unto me, What is his name? What shall I say unto them? And Elohim said unto El Moshe, Ahaya, Asher, Ahaya, I am that I am. And he said, Thus shall you say unto the children of Yasharel, Ahaya I am, has sent me 
unto you. And Elohim said moreover unto El Moshe, Thus shall you say unto the children of Yasharel, Yahuwah, Elohai of your fathers, the Elohai of Avraham, the Elohai of Yitzhak, and the Elohai of Yaakov, has sent me unto you. This is my name forever, and this is my mention unto all generations. Go and gather the elders of Yasharel together, and say unto them, Yahuwah Elohai of your fathers, the Elohai of Avraham, of Yitzhak, and the Elohai of Yaakov, appeared unto me, saying, I have surely visited you, and seen that which is done to you in Mitzrayim. And I have said, I will bring you up out of the affliction of Mitzrayim, unto the land of the Canaanim, and the Hittim, and the Imorim, and the Perizim, and the Hivim, and the Yevusim, unto a land flowing with milk and honey. And they shall hearken to your voice, and you shall come, you and the elders of Yasharel, unto the king of Mitzrayim, and you shall say unto him, Yahuwah Elohai of the Ivrim has met us, and now let us go. We beseech you three days' journey into the wilderness, that we may sacrifice to Yahuwah Eloheinu. And I am sure that the king of Mitzrayim will not let you go, no, not by a mighty hand, and I will stretch out my hand and smite Mitzrayim with all my wonders, which I will do in the midst thereof. And after that, he will let you go, and I will give this people favor in the sight of the Mitzrayim. And it shall come to pass that when ye go, ye shall not go empty, but every woman shall borrow of her neighbor and of her that sojourns in her house, jewels of silver and jewels of gold and raiment, and ye shall put them upon your sons and upon your daughters, and ye shall spoil the Mitzrayim. Shemot, Exodus chapter 4. And Moshe answered and said, But behold, they will not believe me, nor hearken unto my voice, for they will say, Yahweh has not appeared unto you. And Yahweh said unto him, What is that in your hand? And he said, A rod? And he said, Cast it on the ground. And he cast it on the ground, and it became a serpent. And Moshe fled from before it. And Yahweh said unto Moshe, Put forth your hand, and take it by the tail. And he put forth his hand, and caught it. And it became a rod in his hand. That they may believe that Yahuwah, Elohai of their fathers, the Elohai of Avraham, the Elohai of Yitzhak, and the Elohai of Yaakov, has appeared unto you. And Yahuwah said furthermore unto him, Put now your hand into your bosom. And he put his hand into his bosom. And when he took it out, behold, his hand was leprous as snow. And he said, Put your hand into your bosom again. And he put his hand into his bosom again and plucked it out of his bosom, and behold, it was turned again as his other flesh. And it shall come to pass, if they will not believe you, neither hearken to the voice of the first sign, that they will believe the voice of the latter sign. And it shall come to pass, if they will not believe also these two signs, neither hearken unto your voice, that you shall take of the water of the river, and pour it upon the dry land, and the water which you take out of the river shall become blood upon the dry land. And Moshe said unto El Yahuwah, O oh my Adonai, I am not eloquent, neither heretofore, nor since you have spoken unto your servant, but I am slow of speech and of a slow tongue. And Yahuwah said unto him, Who has made man's mouth, or who makes the dumb, or deaf, or the seeing, or the blind? Have not I, Yahuwah? Now therefore go, and I will be with your mouth and teach you what you shall say. And he said, O my Adonai, send, I pray you, by the hand of whom you will send. And the anger of Yahuwah was kindled against Moshe, and he said, Is not Aharon the Levi your brother? I know that he can speak well, and also, behold, he comes forth to meet you. And when he sees you, he will be glad in his heart, and you shall speak unto him, and put the words in his mouth, and I will be with your mouth, and with his mouth and will teach you what ye shall do. And he shall be your spokesman unto the people, and he shall be, even he shall be to you, 
instead of a mouth, and you shall be to him instead of Elohim. And you shall take this rod in your hand, wherewith you shall do signs. And Moshe went and returned to Yitro his father-in-law, and said unto him, Let me go, I pray you, and return unto my brethren, which are in Mitzrayim, and see whether they be yet alive. And Yitro said unto Moshe, Go in peace. And Yahuwah said unto Moshe in Midian, Go, return into Mitzrayim, for all the men are dead which sought your life. And Moshe took his woman and his sons and set them upon an ass, and he returned to the land of Mitzrayim. And Moshe took the rod of Elohim in his hand. And Yahuwah said unto Moshe, When you go to return into Mitzrayim, see that you do all those wonders before Pharaoh which I have put into your hand. But I will harden his heart, that he shall not let the people go. And you shall say unto Pharaoh, Thus says Yahuwah, Yasharel is my son, even my firstborn. And I say unto you, Let my son go, that he may serve me. And if you refuse to let him go, behold, I will slay your son, even your firstborn. And it came to pass by the way in the inn that Yahuwah met him and sought to kill him. Then Zipporah took a sharp stone and cut off the foreskin of her son and cast it at his feet and said, Surely a bloody man are you to me. So he let him go. Then she said, A bloody man you are because of the circumcision. And Yahuwah said to El Ahron, Go into the wilderness to meet Moshe. And he went and met him in the mount of Elohim and kissed him. And Moshe told Aharon all the words of Yahuwah who had sent him, and the signs which he had commanded him. And Moshe and Aharon went and gathered together all the elders of the children of Yashrael. And Aharon spoke all the words which Yahuwah had spoken unto Moshe, and did the signs in the sight of the people. And the people believed. And when they heard that Yahuwah had visited the children of Yashrael, and that he had looked upon their affliction, then they bowed their heads and worshipped. Shemot, Exodus, chapter 5. And afterward, Moshe and Aharon went in and told Pharaoh, Thus says Yahuwah Elohai of Yashrael, Let my people go, that they may hold a feast unto me in the wilderness. And Pharaoh said, Who is Yahuwah that I should obey his voice to let Yasharel go? I know not Yahuwah, neither will I let Yasharel go. And they said, The Elohai of the Ivrim has met with us. Let us go, we pray you, three days' journey into the desert, and sacrifice unto Yahweh Eloheinu, lest he fall upon us with pestilence or with a sword. And the king of Mitzrayim said unto them, Wherefore do ye, Moshe and Aaron, let the people from their works get you unto your burdens? And Pharaoh said, Behold, the people of the land now are many, and ye make them rest from their burdens. And Pharaoh commanded the same day the taskmasters of the people and their officers, saying, Ye shall no more give the people straw to make brick, as heretofore let them go and gather straw for themselves. And the tell of the bricks which they did make heretofore, ye shall lay upon them, ye shall not diminish aught thereof, for they be idle. Therefore they cry, saying, Let us go and sacrifice to our Elohim. Let their more work be laid upon the men, that they may labor therein, and let them not regard vain words. And the taskmasters of the people went out, and their officers, and they spoke to the people, saying, Thus says Pharaoh, I will not give you straw. Go ye, get you straw where you can find it. Yet not aught of your work shall be diminished. So the people were scattered abroad throughout all the land of Mitzrayim to gather stubble instead of straw. And the taskmasters hasted them, saying, Fulfill your works, your daily tasks, as when there was straw. And the officers of the children of Yashrael, which Pharaoh's taskmasters had set over them, were beaten and demanded, 
Wherefore have you not fulfilled your task in making brick both yesterday and today as heretofore? Then the officers of the children of Yashrael came and cried unto Pharaoh, saying, Wherefore do ye thus with your servants? There is no straw given unto your servants, and they say to us, Make brick, and behold, your servants are beaten. But the fault is in your own people. But he said, Ye are idle, ye are idle. Therefore ye say, Let us go and do sacrifice to Yahuwah. Go therefore now and work, for there shall no straw be given you. Yet shall ye deliver the tale of bricks. And the officers of the children of Yashrael did see that they were in an evil case. After it was said, Ye shall not minish out of your bricks from your daily task. And they met Moshe and Aharon, who stood in the way, as they came forth from Pharaoh. And they said unto them, Yahuwah, look upon you and judge, because ye have made our savor to be abhorred in the eyes of Pharaoh and in the eyes of his servants to put a sword in their hand to slay us. And Moshe returned unto el and said, Adonai, wherefore have you so evil and treated this people? Why is it that you have sent me? For since I came to Pharaoh to speak in your name, he has done evil to the people. Neither have he delivered your people at all. <laughs> 